Good morning, fifth grade. We're going to continue reading in our text, Usser, God of the Afterlife. Um, you should have already completed your quick write and vocabulary, but just in case you were absent on um, Friday, you can go ahead and complete it now. Describe the conflict between Set and Usser. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the focus question. It says, what new information do we gain from reading Usser's side of the story? And so in guided reading, we've been focusing on point of view and what that means. And today, we're going to compare and contrast Usser's point of view to Aset and Set's point of view. Our vocabulary words are preordained, which means to determine something beforehand. So something's preordained, that means you've thought about it beforehand. Homage, that's when you pay respect to someone. And eternal, that means lasting forever, without beginning or end. This is the sign of infinity or forever. All right, we did um, our CSPS strategy in parallel teaching, and you guys did the paragraph for homework. And so now we're going to look at this first part of parallel teaching, okay? Um, but before we can get to these questions, we need to think about what's happened so far in our story. And you can go back and refresh your memory of the CSPS. But we know that our story begins when Usser wakes up because Aset is kissing him back to life. And they spend one last night together. And then he walks into the Nile. And he has these memories of Aset. And he kind of sees into the past and sees that I sat crying when, and grieving when he left. Um, and that's why the Nile was, River was so salty because of her tears. And, um, and then as he gets deeper and deeper into the water, he starts to have these dark memories of his own. And that's where I'm going to start reading these italics at the bottom of the page. Follow along. It says, he was alive in that beautiful carved box, in black that held only the clean smell of cedar. As he pushed and shouted and struggled against the lid, that mild smell was overpowered by the acrid odor of his sour breath, the stench of mortal fear. There was little air in this tomb. His mouth and then skins and then insides turned the page. Dried. He was cold, lifeless, a miserable wretch, for he would have no funeral, no tomb for his wife to honor, eternally alone. So Usser remembers getting thrown into the box by Set, and he remembers dying in that box. Let's keep reading. Then everything changed. He was dead still, sealed in his coffin. Still yet, he knew Aset was close. She carried him home. She would right his most grievous wrong. And then Set came and shredded him. Usser's parts would have throbbed if they could. Never whole, never whole. And then Usser remembers that Set came and ripped him to pieces. And we remember from a couple of weeks ago that um, Egyptians believed that their body had to be completely whole and preserved in order to make it into the afterlife. You couldn't go to the afterlife if you didn't have a body. And that is why Set ripped him up. And Usser is remembering all of this. Okay, let's keep reading. Aset made him whole. How she had done it, Usser didn't know. But he knew their love had transformed her. She became the sweet wind that refreshes. True love could do that. Usser hadn't realized that Set despised him until the moment before the lid fell when he realized Set's face twisted with envy, jealousy, naked knee. Okay, so Usser is thinking about how, like, I don't even know what I did to him, but he's just, like, so jealous of me. And then he remembers, like, maybe it was because, like, I cheated on him in a bet hut on accident. Uh, maybe that's why he got back at me. Let's go to the last paragraph. Usser's fresh green skins sloth away in the waters, a poignant kiss goodbye. 
Okay, so it's saying that the waters of the Nile River gave him that last kiss goodbye. And then his skin grew black, dark as what lay beneath the earth. He swam to the underworld, do what, where his nephew Impu oversaw the dead. But Impu yielded his supremacy there to Usser, a gesture of loyalty and love that touched Usser's heart. Usser vowed to rule with mercy, for he knew better than us for who knew better than Usser how awful would a world would be a world without mercy. Alright, let's go to the first part of our parallel teaching. In box one, it says, According to the text, Usser vowed to rule with mercy, for no one knew better than Usser how awful would be a world without mercy. And it tells us that mercy means you forgive someone instead of punishing them or getting revenge. What does Usser mean when he vowed to rule with mercy? So we need to think back to our background knowledge. If Usser is the god of the afterlife, that means he judges the human hearts against the feather. And if the heart is as light as a feather, that means the person lived a good life. And Usser lets them go into the afterlife. But if the heart weighs heavier than the feather, that means that they did not live a balanced life and they feed their heart to Amit and they don't get to go into the afterlife. And so ultimately, Usser is the judge of who goes in and out of the afterlife. So what is it? What does it mean that he's going to have mercy? Okay, and so we need to think about the definition of forgiving someone instead of punishing them. And so in box one, I would write, Usser means that he will forgive more people than he will punish in the underworld. This means more people will experience the afterlife. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for box two. It says, why does Usser know what it means to live in a world without mercy? So we need to think what situation was in Usser's life where someone did not forgive him and where someone punished him or got revenge. And so I'm thinking back into the text to Usser's memory of Set throwing him in the box and killing him and then ripping him up into pieces because he was so envious. In box 2a, I would write, Usser had not experienced any mercy from Set, which makes him want to give other people mercy. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 2b. It says, what kind of, that should be ruler, what kind of ruler will Usser be? How do you know? And so if Usser wants mercy, if he wants to give people mercy and forgiveness, that lets me know that he's going he's gonna to try to be a fair ruler. He's going to try to be a kind and just ruler because he knows what it's like for someone to not show mercy or kindness towards him. And so in box two, we would write, Usser will be a kind and fair ruler. He will try to forgive as much as possible because he states that he wants to rule with mercy. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to turn the page. Okay, on the next page, we have a chart where we're going to compare the conflicts between set Aset and Usser. We're also going to compare how they respond to the conflict and their character traits. Okay, so we're in the column about Usser because that's the story we read. And then in parallel teaching, you'll do Set and Aset. Okay, what is Usser's conflict? And if we go back to our problem that we talked about on Friday, we know that Usser is angry at Set for killing him and making his wife Aset sad. And so in this first part of box six, you would write, Usser is angry with Set for killing him and for making his wife Aset sad. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready 
to keep going. And it says, how does he respond to this conflict? If we go back into the text, when Esther is um, just getting into the Nile River, right, he says that um, he's going to, um, he said he's going to flood the Nile River every year to, um, as like a memory of Aset and what um, Set did to her. Okay, so he says, in the text in the first page, it says, But he would honor the enduring grief. Yes, he would make the river flood yearly. When the waters retreated, they would leave behind silt and enrich the land, so plants would find purchase. The land would resurrect to match Usser's resurrection. Okay, so he responded by flooding the Nile River every year to honor a set. So that new life can grow. And then he's going to do a second thing. At the end of the text, it tells us that he is going to rule with mercy. He's going to rule the underworld with mercy. And so in this middle box, in the last column, we would write, Usser decides to flood the Nile every year so that new life can grow. He also goes down to the underworld to what to rule. He promises to rule with mercy. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the last box. It says, what do these details reveal about Usser as a person? Okay, and if he wants to honor his wife and if he wants to rule with mercy, that, let us, that lets us know that he's compassionate and merciful. He values fairness. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep going. All right, and so um, you can kind of go ahead and jot down some notes for the paragraph in this writing support section. Um, just what you, what new pieces of information you think we gained from us or side of the story. But don't start your paragraph yet.